afternoon. A little call and response. Great to see you. Um, this is a welcome to the April 4th, 2024 regular meeting of the Forsyth County Commissioners. And we will begin our uh, sorry. We will begin our meeting today with an invocation from uh, Stephen Schaefer, Church of the Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by me. I'm going to lead the pledge today. Thank you. Uh, we have a good. Please welcome forward, Mr. Schaefer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the chance to gather together today to discuss important matters for our community. We ask for inspiration and patience with each other as we wrestle together the things we need to do. We're so grateful for all that Thou hast given us, for the place we live, for our citizens, for our inspired leaders. Help us to be kinder. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Citizens who are interested in participating in the public session portion of the meeting, you actually can call 336-422-1200 and you'll be placed on hold until the public session begins. And members of the audience who are interested in participating in the public session portion of the meeting, you need to fill out a speaker card and return to our clerk at the end of the dais, uh, uh, Ms. Ashley Matthews. Um, so um, that number again, if you're calling in, is 336-422-1200. And the first item on the agenda is a public hearing to consider expenditures of county general funds for an economic development project and authorizing an agreement with Rodell Incorporated. Hassan Mitchell's coming up. Hassani Mitchell's coming up, Economic Development Program Administrator, and he's going to give us an overview of the request. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, pleasure to be before you all again. Uh, as you all know, we briefed this item over the last two weeks under project code name Project Olivedale. And so today uh, we will uh, detail the company name as well as pertinent details around the company and the county's local incentive package. So it's already been stated, uh, this is an economic development incentive for Raydale Incorporated. Uh, Raydale is located in Johannesburg, South Africa, and the Forsyth County location would be its first North American location. Company manufactures high quality electrical and electrical mechanical components, and these components serve a variety of industries, including railway, uh, passenger trains, defense vehicles, and electrical vehicles. Uh, so they're considering locating and launching a state-of-the-art facility here in uh, Forsyth County, specifically Winston-Salem. And this U.S. facility would strengthen its local presence, but also ensure that it is compliant with uh, United States, Mexico, and Canadian regulations. And just to provide some additional information around the company, uh, Ray Dell, uh, they produce and manufacture uh, electric motor generator units, regulators, converters, uh, for the defense vehicle industry as well as the heavy vehicle sector. So uh, we would definitely be happy to have them in our community. The Forsyth County project will be located at 209 Mercantile Drive. Uh, that is in the city of Winston-Salem in the University Parkway area, also known as Stanleyville. This is a 35,000 square foot facility, which would also hold the production as well as uh, some office space as well. Uh, the company is considering other locations in South Carolina. We take a look at the capital investment. The company proposes to invest $5,090,000 in capital, and that's divided into real property as well as machinery and equipment. And so that breakout is listed for you here. That's $1,090,000 in real property investment and $4 million in machinery and equipment. This investment would generate 50 full-time jobs, and these jobs have an average salary of $65,294 per year. 
uh, I've detailed a snapshot of these jobs and when the company looks to deploy these jobs. As you can see, it's a myriad of positions, including managerial positions, technical positions, sales, clerical operators and laborers, and they look to deploy these jobs uh, starting in late 2024. So that's a snapshot there. If you take a look at the county's incentive package, this is a standard five-year incentive based upon the county's uh, tax rate and based upon the $5,090,000 investment, the county's five-year incentive would not exceed $69,746, and that's 50% of the property taxes that the company would pay uh, during that five-year period. This would generate approximately $209,982 in taxes over a 10-year period, and the county, uh, we would net 67% of those taxes, and that's listed there at $140,237 over 10 years. Other considerations, the city of Winston-Salem is also proposing a five-year incentive package because it's located here in the city. Uh, the state of North Carolina is also proposing uh, additional incentives through the Department of Commerce. That's a building reuse grant and also a 1NC grant, which is tied to uh, the jobs. And then the community college has a customized training value of $78,000 as well. Uh, the company uh, is invested in workforce development, and so they propose uh, accredited uh, apprenticeships as well as continuing education opportunities. Uh, that concludes my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. We also have a representative from the company as well as uh, representatives from our partners at Greater Winston-Salem, Inc. Um, perhaps you could introduce the representatives from the company who are here. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ellis Kiefer with Greater Winston. Uh, she'll come as well as a representative from the company. Okay. Welcome. Any questions for Hassani? Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. This is a public hearing, and speakers will have up to 15 minutes to speak total in favor of this request, and up to 15 minutes total to speak in opposition. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? You can just tell us your name and address. Get going. Thank you. Ellis Kiefer, 525 Vine Street. Good afternoon, Chairman Martin, Vice Chair Wisenhunt, and members of the board. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Greater Winston-Salem, Inc. is excited to present Project Olivedale today for incentive consideration. We're grateful that Riddell has identified Forsyth County as an attractive location for their first North American manufacturing operation. As Hassani mentioned, the company is a reputable manufacturer of products for heavy-duty commercial vehicles and has demonstrated a commitment to innovation and to community leadership. The 50 jobs and the investment created by this project will have a meaningful impact on the individuals and families in Forsyth County, and it furthers our economic development strategy to grow our advanced manufacturing sector. Thank you again for your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the petition? I declare the public hearing closed, and do we have a motion? I have approval. Motion to approve by uh, Vice Chair Wisdom. Is there a second? Second by uh, Mr. Plyler. Um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Rose, aye. excuse me, hold your hand up. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the next item on the agenda <clears throat> is a public hearing for the County of Forsyth, North Carolina, regarding tax exempt bonds for health care facilities to be issued by the National Finance Authority for the benefit of Novant Health Incorporated. <clears throat> Excuse me, Charles Bauer, attorney from Robinson Bradshaw, will give a brief overview of the request, and he is here, Mr. Bauer. Thank you. And you just give us your address also, we're great. My address is um, 710 um, East 7th Street, Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Um, Commissioners, would it be helpful if we went over the slideshow that was presented to you at the last meeting for everyone's benefit, or should I give a quick summary? Um, anybody interested in the whole? I, I'm fine with Sorry. you just giving us a brief summary. Sure. Thank you. The heart of the request is that the board hold a public hearing 
for people interested in the community as published in the notice to voice their opinion on the issuance of the bonds and the projects being financed with the bonds as published in the notice with the relevant projects being in this county being the Kernersville Medical Center, the Forsyth Medical Center, and the Medical Park Hospital, as well as projects built with the existing mm -hmm. bonds. Um, all is published in the notice and available in the agenda. After that hearing is concluded, um, we then ask the board approve the resolution that we put in front of them. Um, the key aspects being that these bonds are conduit bonds through the National Finance Authority. They are not a debt of the county, nor is the county in any way responsible for the bonds. This is a requirement under federal tax law, um, section 147F of the code. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Bauer? Thank you very much. This is a public hearing and speakers will have up to 15 minutes total to speak in favor of this request up to 15 minutes total to speak in opposition. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the petition? I declare that the public hearing is closed. Um, Move approval. Would anybody else like to make a motion, particularly to start? Actually, I'll make a motion to approve in principle the issuance of not to exceed 785 million of health care facilities revenue and revenue refunding bonds. This is Novant Health's obligated group for the uh, benefit of Novant Health, Inc. So I made a motion. Is there a second, please? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Wisenhut. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your hand. Motion carries unanimously. The third item on the agenda is the zoning petition of Jerry Stoltz and Patty Stoltz from AG to GBL, General Business Limited, a zoning docket F1637, and Chris Murphy from our Planning and Development Services will give us a brief overview. Um, this is a, probably the third brief overview we've had. Good. It, it will be brief. Uh, it is a request to rezone from AG to GBL. Uh, again, we did ha hold a public hearing on this item uh, back on the 21st, and it was briefed a number of times. This is the subject property shown in uh, GMA3 there on the um, west side of 52 along Shore Road. Subject property identified in yellow again, uh, west side of Shore Road there at uh, 52 on the north and south side of Griffin Road. Uh, same uh, property shown on the countywide aerial imagery. Uh, this is uh, shown in the, uh, the, the properties identified and shown on the um, Tobaccoville area plan update. Uh, it does recommend a mixed use uh, development. Part of the uh, recommendations of that uh, is that it be comprehensively planned and designed. Uh, Legacy 23 and the area plan do recommend commercial and office development for the properties adjacent to US 52, including the northern subject property. Uh, these plans recommend, recommend a variety of residential types for the parcels west of Shore Road and south of Griffin, including the southern subject property. For the subject property, specifically, the area plan recommends an interconnected, comprehensively designed development that is complementary to area uses with a density of less than eight units per acre for any portion that is uh, for residential use. Uh, the requested uses are generally consistent with the mixed use recommendations of the area plan and Legacy 2030. However, without a site specific development plan, the specific request is uh, inconsistent with the comprehensive design recommendations for the area. Uh, therefore, this request is deemed to be incompatible with the existing single family uh, neighborhood and the character of the area, as it would allow high intensity commercial encroachment into a rural residential area without a defined plan. Uh, some revisions, uh, I went over these uh, before the public hearing. They did offer the condition related to buffer yards and berming. Uh, prior to the 21st public hearing, they did agree to eliminate four uses, and that's one through four uh, there at the bottom of this image. Since that time, they have also, the petitioners have also agreed to eliminate the use hotel or motel. Um, just as a reminder, this was heard by the planning board at their February 8th, 2024 public hearing. There were a number of speakers in opposition. Uh, for a variety of reasons. Following that public hearing, the Planning Board did uh, recommend denial of the request by a six to three vote. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Chris? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, just confirming what I think you've already indicated, the, um, the revised conditions as agreed to by the petitioner are, would be a part of 
the record in any motion made today? Is that? I will defer to the county attorney on. I assume it's incorporated into the motions. It's definitely they have submitted the written consent conditions, and we've also sent a revised ordinance and special use permit eliminating these five uses. So it's my assumption that's what would be voted on. It, it would be. Uh, as Chris indicated, the conditions have not changed from the last time we heard this. The only change was that the use hotel or motel has been deleted. And my understanding, just for the record of folks who've been following this, but may not have the details of what has gone on since the, the last meeting, that there was a public meeting held by the town of Tobaccoville that took a number of, of comments. Uh, and among the input that we have received on uh, you know, what's come out of those discussions since then uh, is that um, the town of Tobaccoville, with this additional change, has, is no longer um, in opposition to the uh, to the proposal um, as as modified. That is my understanding. Again, I was not there, but that is the email that I received. So, I mean, I'm, I assume that there are folks here today who could correct me if I've misunderstood anything that's happened. But I just wanted that referenced so that folks who are concerned and are following this but have not been directly involved at all all the levels that they know what has happened since the last meeting. Thank you. Any other questions for Chris? All righty. Are we ready for a motion? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that the zoning map amendment F-1637, including special use limited district per permit, be approved on the basis of the following. The proposed limited use zoning map amendment as petitioned by Jerry Stoltz and Patty Stoltz to rezone a 20.66 acre piece of property from AG to GBL, general business limited use adult care center, animal shelter, public arts and crafts studio, banking and financial services, uh, building contractor, general building material supply, car wash, child care, drop-in, child care center, church or religious institution, community uh, church or religion institution, neighborhood convention, convenience store, food and drug store, funeral home, furniture and home furnishing store, institutional vocational training facility, kennel, indoor, nursery, lawn and garden supply store, retail offices, recreation facility, public recreation center, indoor restaurant with drive-through service, restaurant without drive-through service, retail store, school vocation or professional, service A, shopping center, shopping center small, storage service, retail, um, veterinary service, warehousing is consistent with the recommendations of the legacy comprehensive plan and reasonable are in the public interest because the subject property containing agriculture and undeveloped land located at the northwest and southwest intersections of Shore Road and Griffith Road in and adjacent to Debacable is currently zoned AG and is surrounded by the highway US 52 and property zoned AG, HB, HBS, and RS9 with surrounding uses of church, agriculture land, undeveloped land, single family house and a convenience store. Number two, the proposed GBL zoning is primarily in, intended to accommodate a wide range of retail services and office uses located along thoroughfares in areas which have developed with minimal front setbacks in growth management area one, two, and three, and in uh, activity center, but it is not intended to encourage or accommodate strip commercial development. Number three, the subject property has access to public water and access to public sewer is located 2,000 feet to the east. And number four, the subject property is located in growth management area three and allowed uses are consistent with the debacable area plan update and current and planned nearby zoning and uses. Is there a second? We have a second by uh, uh, Commissioner McDaniel. Any further discussion? 
All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Next item on the agenda is a resolution recognizing April 2024 as Public Health Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Sarita Sutton is here to accept the resolution on behalf of Public Health. And please come forward. Um, this resolution recognizes April 2024 as Public Health Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Whereas the Forsyth County Public Health Workforce is a critical component of our emergency response to nature and made man disasters and widespread disease outbreaks in our county. Whereas public health measures to control and eliminate infectious diseases, improve environmental sanitation, and promote healthy lifestyle practices have been the greatest causes of improved health status and increased life expectancy for the residents of our county and all residents of North Carolina. Whereas public health plays a critical role in advancing health equality and preventing chronic diseases and injuries, requiring uh, resulting in improved productivity and decreased health care costs for all of North Carolinians. Whereas the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners is committed to a continued emphasis on prevention of public health and to help our county and North Carolina reach a better state of health through actions outlined in the Healthy North Carolina 2030 objectives. Whereas communities, local health departments, employers, hospitals, and health care providers, individuals and families, insurers, county leaders and policymakers, faith-based community, and schools and child care facilities must work together to identify and develop innovative solutions to health problems facing the people of Forsyth County. And whereas the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners encourages all residents to recognize that public health is working to ensure that all residents are protected from the threats such as uh, COVID-19, foodborne disease, injuries, and chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and asthma. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes the month of April 2024 as Public Health Month in Forsyth County, encourages its ob observation by all county residents, and convenes our deepest gratitude to public health prof professionals who serve our county every day. That's a motion. Motion from uh, Commissioner Wisenhunt. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. No, Motion no, carries unanimously. I, I thought we had a good reply. <laughs> Thank, Ladies, thank you very much for being here. The next item on the agenda is a resolution recognizing April 2024 as National County Government Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Commissioner McDaniel, would thank you please you, read this resolution? Uh, thank you, Chairman, I'll, and thank you for allowing me to sit still. Whereas the nation's 3,069 counties serving more than 330 million Americans provide essential services to create healthy, safe, and vibrant communities. Whereas counties fulfill a vast range of responsibilities and deliver services that touch nearly every aspect of our residents' lives. Whereas Forsyth County and all counties take pride and our responsibilities to protect and enhance the health, well-being, and safety for our residents in efficient and cost-effective ways. Whereas under the leadership of the National Association of Counties, NACO, President Mary Jo McGuire, NACO is highlighting county leadership through the lens forward together. 
celebrating the role of county governments in connecting, inspiring, and leading as intergovernmental partners. Whereas that role includes a responsibility to, in, to inspire county residents to engage with their communities and to lead by highla highlighting our strength as intergovernmental partners. And whereas each year since 1991, NACO has encouraged counties across the country to elevate awareness to county responsibilities, programs, and services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Versailles County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes April 2024 as National County Government Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina, and encourages its observation to all county residents and convey our gratitude to the county employees who serve every day, adopted this fourth day of April 2024. Thank you, Chairman, for allowing me to share. Make there's a motion from uh, Commissioner McDaniel. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your hand. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the Historic Resources Commission on behalf of Forsyth County to form the Forsyth County America 250 North Carolina Committee. Um, do we have a motion for that? Motion Mr. to approve. Second, a motion by Commissioner Wizenhunt, second by Commissioner Limble. Um, any discussion? Pretty excited. Yes, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just asking any, any discussion on that motion. I think okay. we're all aware the 250th anniversary is coming up, and uh, this is an opportunity for hopefully planning some activities coming up in just a few years. All right. Um, all in favor, please hold up your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes for the meeting of March 21st, 2024. Move approval. I have a motion by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Wisenhunt. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Madam Clerk, do we have any calls or cards for the public session? Mr. Chairman, we do not. All right. Mr. County Manager, I think we're ready to continue with the rest of the agenda. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. We do have some business items for consideration this afternoon. Uh, we have reviewed these at least twice in briefing sessions and some a few more than that. Um, so hopefully we've answered any questions that anybody may have. And so with that, with that, I'll go ahead and dive into the items in front of you today. We've got several budget and finance items. Item nine is a resolution approving a revision to the fiscal year 2023-2024 home and community care block grant funding plan for older adults and authorizing execution of the necessary documents to submit the revised plan for state approval. Um, this request, it's really a request from senior services to shift $69,914 of congregate nutrition funds to the adult daycare function. So that's it. Move approval. Motion approved by Commissioner Wisenhut. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any discussion? All in favor, <coughs> please hold up your right hand. All right. Agenda item 10 is an amendment to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget ordinance. It appropriates $94,900 of surplus proceeds to the motor vehicle and mobile equipment replacement subfund. We did have an auction. It was very successful. And so that auction raised that $94,900. And this will recognize that in that subfund. Move approval. Motion, motion approved by Commissioner Wisenhunt. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, item 11 is an amendment to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget ordinance that appropriates $50,000 from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services for agreement addenda 121 for ARPA TSF Public Health Services, and these these dollars are pretty flexible. They'll actually um, be allowed to be used for any core public health function. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion approved by uh, Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. All right. Motion carries unanimous. Agenda item 12 is an amendment to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget ordinance appropriates $12,108 from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services for agreement addenda 116, which is Healthy Beginnings, and that is an infant mortality reduction program. Is there a motion? Move approval. Motion approved by Commissioner Wisenhunt. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. 
Agenda item 13 is an amendment to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget ordinance that appropriates $16,200 from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services for agreement addenda 452 for breast and cervical cancer, and this will fund cancer screenings for those targeted populations. Move to approve. Motion approved by Commissioner McDaniel, second by Commissioner Bessie. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, before several. we move on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Manager, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd just like to say a special thank you to all the people who prepared these grants. Uh, we had this little discussion last year. These are not automatic. They, they are actually dollars returned and not spent at the, at the point to the, particularly in this case, the, uh, the, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services. And our folks are monitoring that and getting on and applying for those dollars as quickly as possible or we would not have them. So it is. It, it appears to be routine, but it's not routine in that it requires effort to get them. So I just wanted to thank everybody for doing that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good point. Uh, several grant matters. Item 14 is a resolution authorizing submission of an application to the Duke Energy Foundation to apply for and accept if awarded a grant to fund interpretive signs uh, at Blues Lake Park. It is. It was a grant that actually we actually got awarded a little bit more than we thought, but it's a $25,000 grant with a uh, $10,000 match. And I believe you're going to hear over the next week or so we did get awarded that. So we'll be off and running. Move approval. Was approved by Commissioner Plyler. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Bessie. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. All right. Item 15 is also a, a, a relates to Blues Lake Park as well. It's a resolution authorizing submission of an application to the North Carolina Division of Parks and Recreation Department of Natural and Cultural Resources to apply for and accept if awarded a Parks and Recreation Trust Fund or PARDIF development grant to fund the development of the second phase of Blue Lakes Park. It is a $500,000 grant that would fund infrastructure, additional trails, an additional picnic shelter facility, public restroom facility, and two playgrounds. Second. Which is approved by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner uh, Plyler. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item 16 is a resolution authorizing submission of an application to the North Carolina Foundation for Soil and Water Conservation to apply for and accept if awarded a grant to purchase a no-till planting drill. I think the amount is outlined in the resolutions up to $21,000. Move approval. Second. Motion approved by Commissioner Plyler, second by Commissioner Linville. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold up your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we only have one contractual matter on this agenda. Item 17 is a resolution authorizing execution of a lease agreement with Humane Solutions Spay Neuter Program for surgical space inside the Forsyth County Animal Shelter. It is a one year agreement. Um, as outlined in the information provided, it could actually have pretty significant savings uh, to our surgical cost and provide a really necessary service for our citizens. Move approval. Second. Motion approved by Commissioner Plotter, second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any discussion? All in favor, please hold your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Um, Madam Vice Chair, are you going to handle the one appointment to the commission? I think, um, I think uh, um, our clerk is clerk's going, going to. Thank you, then. Good afternoon, commissioners. In front of you is an appointment to the Commission on Ending Homelessness. There are three capacities open. However, all of the applicants applied for the at-large position. Those five, the five applicants are listed below. Please vote for one. Just a little bit. Much. Mr. Chairman, Ivis Romero received four votes. Okay, thank you very much. All right. And then the last item on the agenda is one tax administration item. Item 19 is a resolution approving refunds by the tax assessor and collector in the amount of $13,524.04. Those are generated out of the North Carolina vehicle tax system. Move approval. 
Motion approved by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Linville. Any discussion? In favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Did the um, original item 17 get uh, postponed? Did I miss something? Oh, we, we just voted on that. Sorry. I, I, it makes me feel good. I do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Make me a little empathy. No, no. That's it. All righty. So we are ready to adjourn. Have a, I'll just declare us adjourn. We're good. And we want to take uh, how long we want to need for the briefing set? briefing to order um, this is the briefing for the next regular meeting on April the 18th 2024 um, we do have one discussion item and it's related to uh, North Carolina 66 lane expansion at Watkins Ford Road um, which 2024 high impact low cost program um, so maybe are you going to do this Chris no week we have uh, John Ryan from NCDOT I see him standing, Division and Deputy Divi Division Nine, Deputy Division Engineer, our Division Nine rep. So thank you for being here, Mr. Ryan. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, John Ryan, Deputy Division for the Department here. Um, we uh, come to you asking for support for a uh, turn lane on the NC66 at Watkins Ford Road. Uh, a little presentation I'll run through, give you a little background. Um, the project would be funded through our high impact, low cost program. Um, this is a, a program out of mobility funding out of Raleigh, each division. Um, receives uh, around 1.5 million dollars a year um, to use uh, use for smaller projects uh, provide operational improvement modernization of intersections things of that nature typically projects might include turn lanes uh, as does this one roundabouts minor widening or operational improvements uh, such as uh, signalized intersections projects uh, are reviewed and selected based off traffic volume uh, road restrictions safety concerns pavement condition things of that nature. Uh, NC66, Watkins Ford, as you know, that area of Scythe County is under a lot of growth, residential growth over there around Teague, Union Cross. Um, so this intersection comes up a lot in discussions with the public uh, and has a number of uh, accident uh, history there as well. Uh, location map, uh, I-74 here on the south, I-40 to the north, Union Cross just to the west, and obviously NC66 running north to south there. Um, crash analysis uh, in the last five years were uh, four accidents there, um, all, three of those involving rear ends and one a side impact. Um, two injuries out of those four, uh, pretty significant. Um, crash numbers are not terrible, um, but we receive a lot of complaints at this intersection for peak hour delay and these accidents looking at the the uh, timing of these accidents are all related to those peak hour delays a lot of cars piling up at this intersection as folks stop to turn somebody's not paying attention somebody gets tired of waiting and pulls out ends up in a in a side impact or a rear end collision um, we are just in the preliminary stages. Uh, as I said, we're looking for a resolution of support uh, to move forward with the project. Uh, we anticipate it being over $250,000, which necessitates us to get a resolution of support to take to the Board of Transportation. Uh, but we have a conceptual layout, provides that left turn lane onto Watkins Ford. Um, we do anticipate some utility issues, uh, and we may end up with some right-of-way issues on the corners there that we'll have to work through. But overall, it should be a pretty simple project. Um, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Got any questions uh, for Mr. Ryan? I have one, just sort of a curious one. When, yes, you, when you look at these kind of issues, what what influences your decision whether to have a roundabout or add a turn lane, for example? 
I guess it, I guess this is to deal with volume. I'm going to answer my own question. I think it's probably to deal with a higher volume. Exactly. Probably issue in the roundabout is simply to, to get people to cross the intersections and slow down. Uh, see, it, yeah. It, yeah, it's a combination of those two. Um, it, when we look at an intersection that has uh, a lot of balanced turning movements, kind of a four-legged intersection, right. there's lots of turn left and right, and the numbers kind of balance, that lends itself well to a roundabout. Uh, where you have an intersection where there is one predominant turning movement, that lends itself more to a um, traditional left turn or right turn intersection. Allows the stacking. I got it. Good. Thank you very much. So, John, what do you need? Do you need a formal action from the board or is a letter from the chairman going to be sufficient or what? Typically, what's... we get a resolution of support. Okay. Um, and then that goes along with our package for funding. Okay. And so we would be able to, the board would be in a position to do that um, two weeks from today. Yep, that that be works. Just fine. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So if it's satisfactory for the board, we'll just add something to the briefing agenda we're getting ready to go through. And this will be the first briefing of it, essentially. Thank, Thank you all very much yeah. for being here today. Thanks for all the work you all do. A lot, been, a lot of work in Forsyth County the last uh, four or five years. So. A lot going on now. <laughs> I'll close this out. Okay, I'll leave it alone. Right. Chris is up next. Ready, ready for me, Mr. Chairman? Okay, so um, what we have today, we'll, I'll, um, we have two items that actually have public hearing. So Chris is going to review those in full like we normally do. I'll do a quick review of everything else that's um, going to be in front of, uh, that we'll do a detailed review of next Thursday. And we do have one item for closed session today, which is an attorney-client privilege matter. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Chris to review items one and two on this agenda, which are public hearings, and I'll just, uh, and they are actually kind of related as I understand it. So turn it over to Chris. That's correct. That is correct, Mr. County Manager. Thank you. And I apologize for jumping the gun. I won't name any names, but someone told me there were no discussion items today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he didn't know. This that. is a petition of Trabam Investments, uh, LLC. Uh, it's a 0.42 acre uh, piece of property located on the north side of US 421 west of Dalton Road. The request is a special use limited rezoning from RS 40 to uh, limited industrial limited use or limited industrial no site plan. This is the subject property identified in uh, on the legacy growth management area plan. It is located in GMA 5, again, there west of uh, Louisville, uh, almost to the Yadkin River, probably halfway in between uh, the intersection and the river crossing into Yadkin County. Uh, this is the subject property identified uh, in yellow. Again, you see it's in an area. There is some adjacent LB zoning. It's currently zoned RS40, and all the other property in that area besides that LB uh, is zoned RS40. Uh, subject property outlined in yellow on the countywide aerial imagery. Again, you see US 421, uh, which is what this is adjacent to. And again, it is a request for a off-premises sign uh, or a billboard, as it's more commonly known. Uh, this is looking north at the uh, zoning sign uh, into the subject property from 421. Uh, this is looking west along 421. Uh, this is looking uh, north from uh, US 421 at the subject property. So you're on the other side of, you're, you're on the other side of 421 at this point, looking across uh, at the subject property. You see the zoning sign there in the um, image. The requested use is uh, what it's in, under the category of business and personal services. Again, it is to use signs off premises that is considered a high intensity use. The site is currently inaccessible from any of the surrounding roads. Access is dependent upon approval of an elected body special use permit, which is a separate action item, which is actually the next item that will go over. And again, that is a, a special use permit for access, not a rezoning in and of itself. We did check with the uh, county attorney's office and per the deputy county attorney, if uh, this were to be rezoned, it would be considered a valid exercise of legislative authority and not considered an illegal spot zone. Again, I, I don't know the specifics, but th that memo is in your packet, I do believe, I think. Uh, it's, we definitely did check. Uh, given the site's location in kind of a rural residential area, the lack of direct access to the site, and the fact that the requested use is inconsistent with the recommendations of Legacy 2030 and the Western Rural Area Development Assessment, not a specific area plan that looked at partial specific recommendations, but it was a policy document that was drafted. Uh, staff believes that this request is inappropriate at this location. 
Uh, this was heard by the planning board at their March 14th, 2024 public hearing. There was one speaker in opposition and he did voice concerns related to the precedent this would set if it were rezoned and the potential visual clutter that would accompany outdoor advertising uh, in this otherwise rural area. Um, and I noticed that the number 10 is not correct there, but there aren't any other billboards uh, in that 10 mile stretch. Uh, following the public hearing and the discussion, the planning board did vote to recommend denial of this request to the county commissioners. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Questions? Uh, Chris, if, if you don't mind, um, Chris forwarded to me this afternoon a deed, um, which I believe relates to this property, and it states no junk cars or business of any type allowed on this property. So we, you're not in the business of enforcing deed restrictions, but that, that is something that you could consider, that the deed says no business allowed on this property. And Chris, you can correct me if I misstated that. No, and again, I, I did bring that. I did bring that to the county attorney's attention because I believe that it, I can't remember if it's cited in the letter uh, from the gentleman uh, who there is a letter in your packet, and he also was the gentleman that did speak at the public hearing. But he did reference that deed restriction, so I just want to make sure that the county attorney was aware of that before this meeting, in case it does come up at the public hearing. Any other questions for Chris? Well, Dalton Road, it don't have access to four twenty one, does it? Dalton Road in and of itself. Well, you're just saying what I'm trying to, I, I don't know exactly where uh, it, Dalton Road is, but this is new 421, is that right? Correct, but there is well, an interchange. This road don't it's, near, it's near the interchange with Shallowford. But it don't directly access it? No. Okay, well, so the, the request for the signage is to identify something that you can't see from the highway, from 421. Will you tell me what it's supposed to be doing then since you, I'm not uh, I, I'm explaining. I'm not following your question. I'm sorry. I, I think, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you just want to put a billboard up on 421 in a stretch as those pictures show, there is no advertising. It's that's just totally, what I'm, that's what totally I'm saying. Blank. Is, is it, it's just a billboard. Somebody's asking for signage yep. to uh, indicate where uh, whatever it is going on. It's not going on right there in the intersection, is it? Or is it? Right. Well, again, that's why it would be considered an off premise sign. It would be advertising. It could advertise something in Greensboro if it wanted to. It would be a billboard, is what they're asking for. It's not for something that's going on there. They're wanting the ability to advertise. And, and again, given today's time, I imagine it would be an electronic message billboard. And you can change the rate of those. You can change those every eight okay, seconds. It's, so it's it, it's a billboard. It's just a, it's a billboard, not to indicate where some other something. Correct. It could be something close by or it could be something. Could be something in Raleigh, theoretically. Okay. Correct. Or Boone, uh, if you're going that way or going east. So. Okay. I understand it now. If there are no further questions on this, there is an accompanying um, request which gets back to the fact that this property in and of itself has no direct access. So they have to get access over a adjoining piece of property that they actually also do own, but the ordinance requires that you either zone that property or you provide an access easement. And in this case, they have chosen to provide themselves an access easement to the property. Uh, if you notice, if you remember the name, it was Tri-Bam Properties. This is George Bambalas and AP Bambalas. I'm, I'm assuming there may be another Bambalas, which comes up to Tri-Bam. But essentially, they, the, the request for the special use permit is it's a 13.19 acre piece of property located on the west side of Dalton Road on both sides of the intersection with Dalton Court. The request is an elected body special use permit for an off-site access easement. Uh, keep in mind, a special use permit has certain procedural things that must be followed different than our legislative zoning process. So with that, I'll turn it over briefly to the county attorney for an explanation of the procedural. So we, we handled one of these <clears throat> last year, if you'll remember, special use permit would fall under the quasi-judicial um, procedure and so it, it, it's a little confusing because it's connected to the other item. The other item is straightforward legislative rezoning, but this 
uh, easement would be um, a quasi-judicial matter, so you should not discuss this with anyone outside of this hearing right here, the hearing that we're going to have in two weeks, and you'll be acting on this item, 1640, as basically the judge and the jury. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. In regard to the deed restrictions, did I understand you correctly to say the board could either take that in consideration or not? That, that's correct. That's on um, 1639, but yes, that is correct. Well, then uh, who does have authority to enforce a deed restriction? Uh, certainly uh, the parties to the deed could enforce it, um, perhaps the neighbors, um, but that would, be, that would be a private matter. But, but it is it, it could be considered by the board as as to whether you consider this to be an appropriate use for the property and and surrounding areas uh, go ahead let me just make sure um, <clears throat> that I have have it straight this is clearly related to the rezoning request but the distinction is we can take, we can hear public comments or correspondence regarding the zoning request because it's a quasi legislative matter. If someone were to seek to contact us outside the public hearing process with comments on item two here, the, the special use permit, we have to tell them we can't. We can't hear or listen to or take your comments on this. Um, if, you're, if you're contacting us about the billboard request, tell us that that's what you're contacting about. about but we can't talk about the other one. Uh, absolutely. If somebody wants to talk to you about whether or not a billboard is appropriate for the site, you can discuss that with anybody. Um, this is related, so it makes it a little bit confusing, but 1640 is just whether or not access should be granted across this property to get to the other site. So I suspect most people that would want to talk to you about this would want to talk about whether or not a billboard is appropriate. And, and you can discuss whether or not it's appropriate. And if the 1639 were not to pass, there's no reason to hear, have a hearing on 1640. Correct. Uh, you know, again, I don't think anything would preclude. Well, I mean, again, it's 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 kind of. I don't know why they would want to go through and encumber their property with a special use permit that doesn't access anyth access anything that wasn't approved in the earlier action. So to me, it somewhat becomes moot. Uh, that's probably a legal question as opposed to. But at the end of the day, I don't I don't think you would have the need to approve a special use permit if you don't approve the rezoning. It, it would be it would be up to the petitioner. Um, most likely they would, wouldn't want to bother with 1640 if 1639 didn't pass, but they, they could still, you could still grant them access and not the use if, if that's what they wanted. Okay. Um, if yes. there aren't any more questions procedurally, I'm going to go ahead and run through the, the, the PowerPoint that may spur some additional questions. I don't okay. think I have a lot of, right. I, I do have several pictures, but there aren't a lot of, there's not a lot of meat to this because the planning board consideration was just of the site plan. They don't get into the findings or any of those kind of things. They Essentially, it was a planning board review where they said the site plan does or doesn't meet the requirements, and it is literally an easement uh, on a plat. So again, same same location uh, again in GMA five there uh, west of Louisville between Louisville and the river. Uh, this is the subject property again, a little over thirteen acres. And if you if you remember the uh, case on the uh, the, the F sixteen thirty nine is a little piece of this piece of property here that they're requesting a rezoning of. It's not that entire property. It was just a uh, a portion of that forty by forty, fifty by fifty, something along those lines. But this would afford access to that rezoning to limited industrial. Again, a billboard's not allowed in RS-40, so that's why they have to have a special use permit for the access easement. Again, subject property outlined in yellow on the aerial imagery. You see it's mostly wooded, but again, it's owned by the same person that owns the property where the billboard request is under F-1639. 
That's our special use permit sign. Again, that's looking north along Dalton Road, the subject property is to the left. Looking south along Dalton Road, the subject property is to the right. That's actually, you know, this is Dalton Court, which goes back and um, serves that via roundabout way. This is looking east across Dalton Road. The subject property is the opposite perspective. So the subject property is back behind where the uh, person has taken the photo. This is looking west along Dalton Court. The subject property is on both sides. Uh, Off-site access easement is on the left. This is the site plan. Essentially, it's a survey of the piece of property and that uh, the, the dashed uh, and um, with the road in the middle, that's the access easement. That would then go and serve the billboard if the billboard were approved. These are the findings again. Um, the, the county attorney did go over those, but the findings, you know, can't materially endanger the health or safety. Use meets all required conditions and specifications. That the use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting property, and uh, how it conforms with legacy. Staff is in the position to make recommendations on three of those four findings. We don't have the expertise dealing with property values. Uh, under the first finding, we, we, we feel like that you know, it would not be impactful. The proposed use off-site access easement is not a threat to the public health or safety, the easement in and of itself. Uh, that the uh, use meets all required conditions and specifications. Yes, it does meet the minimum UDO standards regarding width. It would have an all-weather surface driveway going to the billboard, so it would meet those requirements. And then finally, under the final finding, the... Um, Location and care for the use that developed according to the application and plan submitted and approved will be in harmony with the area in which it is located and in general conformity with Legacy 2030. Again, the answer to that question specifically to the easement is yes, because access easements are considered, um, you know, something that's a valid exercise. There's a process to do that. It's allowed in the ordinance for the zoning district if there's a need for it. So again, it all hinges back to the decision that's made on F-1639. Again, under, under the third finding dealing with property values, we don't make an assertion as far as that goes. Um, in conclusion, uh, the access uh, easement is uh, for a use not allowed in underlying zone district does require special use permit. The planning board determined that the site plan does meet all required uh, ordinance requirements at their March 14th, 2024 uh, meeting. And what you'll do on the 18th is hold a public hearing uh, and make a determination regarding those four findings. And with that, I'm glad to answer any questions that the rest of the PowerPoint may have uh, brought up. Any other questions for Chris? All right. All right. I will do a quick review of everything else that we are finalizing for this agenda. Um, like I say, we'll do a, a full review of these next Thursday. So you have um, two special resolutions. Uh, we recognize April 14th through 20th as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. And then you've also got April's Child Abuse Prevention Month in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Minutes that will get uh, churned out in an efficient fashion like um, Ms. Ashley always does. Uh, we have some budget and finance items, and again, these are um, items as we're getting down to year end, you're going to see some additional um, uh, agreement addenda with public health and so on and so forth. But item six is an amendment to the school's capital project ordinance to appropriate some interest earnings to pay for the yield reduction payment owed to the IRS. That is that arbitrage payment where when we issue debt, you put that money in the bank, and, and we are restricted when the earnings get to a certain level, um, we actually got to pay that back to the IRS. Um, we're in a high interest rate environment, which is unique. Um, for my first eight, 15 years here, I never saw this really occur because interest rates had been so low. But um, but it's um, this is a, a function of the environment we live in now, and you'll see more of that. Um, item seven, a, a resolution approving the community-based juvenile delinquency substance abuse and gang prevention plan uh, to, to submit for state approval. That's pretty um, pretty common. You've got an amendment to the fiscal year 24 budget to appropriate some funds from Health and Human Services for agreement addenda 719, which you'll hear more detail about next Thursday, and also the next one, which is agreement addenda 874 for food and lodging. And then you've got a second revision to juvenile, juvenile crime prevention council funding plan. We know the board likes for us to make sure we get those dollars spent and in their entirety, and so uh, we'll need to bring that to you. You do have a couple of grant matters. Um, you're going to hear from uh, both the sheriff and perhaps emergency services as well. They're working on a really unique um, grant around a four-year study 
uh, for uh, automated external defibrillators. I think you've heard a little bit about that. This is actually getting that uh, grant information in. And then item 12, you've got a submission of a grant for the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources to apply for that America 250 North Carolina County Committee grant, which we heard about in this last cycle. Uh, we do have some contract items that are in front of you. Um, the EMS billing and uh, management consultants, we did bid that service out, and we'll bring you the results of that process. And so we'll uh, move, move with an agreement on that. There's an agreement with Pulse Point Foundation uh, for some information, for a, some read-only CAD software that does some pretty unique things around uh, garnering citizen and sort of qualified um, uh, support for um, emergencies that occur in the community. So I'm, I'm, I'll leave you in suspense around that one. It was really interesting. You've got an agreement with municipal emergency services for the purchase of turnout gear uh, for EMS that's in front of you. Uh, the sheriff's, uh, Randy Hunsucker and Sheriff's Department has uh, worked with public health and a lot of folks to bid out uh, inmate health care. That is a very large contract, as you know, for all the health care services that are provided. Um, and um, they have done a, done a good job with that. Item 17, um, is, uh, they, the Sheriff's Department purchases ammunition in bulk. And so they are going to bring that to you. You'll note there's an exception to bidding laws. And I've asked the sheriff to be make sure and be real clear about why they would need that exception. So you'll hear from uh, their experts in that around that uh, around that request. Item 18, you got a resolution ratifying a payment for automotive repair for work and remount services. Um, long story, but you'll you'll hear about it. Basically, we had an ambulance that was involved in a crash. Uh, there was a lot of confusion around who's paying insurance for us. It was a little bit of both, and so we just need to actually get that squared away. Um, purchase of contract for some uh, five Nissan Sentra um, automobiles. Um, actually trying to use some COVID money to, to make sure that, that dollar, those dollars get spent timely, and, and obviously um, that would, would be helpful if we can offset some of our cost on that. So you'll hear about that. Uh, uh, Parks did bid out security services, and so they're going to bring a recommendation to you on that. And then um, John Burgess and Tax, as you know, we are approaching the kind of the completion of really the sort of the, the, the last part of the runway with the appraisal uh, the, that, that will be effective in January of 2026. 2025, I'm sorry. Um, and so um, there, John, John's going to talk a little bit about a strategy to make sure that we've got the expertise in-house to do that work that needs to be done. And then, um, as you know, we have a cooperative agreement with the two land-grant institutions at North Carolina State and NCA&T, uh, really around a cooperative extension services. And um, we're going to bring you uh, that memorandum of agreement. And Damon's been working with his with counterparts at uh, North Carolina State around that that uh, agreement. Um, so that is, it'll be an interesting agenda, and um, that's really it for it. Unless there's any questions, we will go into detail on all those next week. Other than that, Mr. Chairman, all I have is the closed session motion, unless Great. you have anything else. Any other questions for Dudley? I, I don't have a question, but I would like to um, ask our attorney. Um, on two different occasions this week, I have um, been asked uh, if we are a sanctuary county, and I have said no indeed. And um, there's a rumor out there that indeed we are a sanctuary county, but could you address that, please? Uh, e yes, uh, Madam Vice Chair. In 2015, as, as you know, the General Assembly passed a statute which prohibits any North Carolina county or municipality from restricting local law enforcement's ability to cooperate with federal immigration officials. So as you, you may have heard in other places throughout the country, some cities had said, we're not going to cooperate with federal immigration officials and declared themselves to be sanctuary cities. We can't do that in North Carolina, cities and counties can't do that. Having said that, um, I've been with the county attorney's office since the year 2000. I've never heard any suggestion from any member of the Board of Commissioners, be it Democrat or Republican. I've never heard any suggestion from any staff member of Forsyth County that Forsyth County become a sanctuary county. So I don't know where rumors get started and I don't know who 
propagates those rumors, but in no way is Forsyth County Sanctuary County. Thank you. If, if I Great. may um, expound on the question from uh, Commissioner Wisenhut, knowing that it's legally we cannot, and if there was an ax from the constituency, it would just fall on a moot point, correct? That's right, I, and, and I, I don't, I haven't heard any push for us to become a sure. sanctuary county, but you're right. We, we can't do that, and, and no one has tried to do that. Fair enough. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Other comments? I, I think that falls under people make things up. I think so. Department. <laughs> motion for closed session. All right. You Need read it. I'll make it. Sounds good. Need to ask the board to consider a motion to go into closed session to discuss a matter to consult with the attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body, which privilege is hereby acknowledged pursuant to the provisions of North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A3. Since there's no other business to come before the board at this meeting, following the closed session, the meeting will be adjourned. Move approval. Great. Commissioner Pollard, I'll second it. Motion to adjourn. Closed session.